Okay, so now we're going to round the edges of the screen here. I'm going to look in at this. We're going to get these edges rounded on all four corners. And the way that this is going to work is we're going to, let me just deselect so you don't know what I had selected there. I'm going to select a bunch of edges. So I'll start off by selecting this first edge. And please make sure that scale, move, and rotate are not active. Make sure you're on select object while you select objects. If I click it once, I select that one edge. If I click that one edge twice, that edge will like seek out where does this edge end? And so it made its way all the way to the back of the TV. So I double clicked it and I got that line all the way to the back of the TV. Now I'm going to do this for the bottom. Hold my control key down, single click that edge, double click the edge, and now I've selected all of those edges as well. Hold my control key down, single click, double click, single click, double click. And then notice something here. In this case, the edge stopped right there where this, where this edge went in. And that's exactly what I want to have happen. I want that edge to stop right there. I want this vertus right here. Don't do anything. Stay put. You know, I, don't, don't change the look. Um, let me look at my reference image one more time. It's, good. it's still going to all be flat over there, though, so I think we're still going to be okay. So with those selected, I'm going to turn on the camphor. And initially, you might be thinking, hmm, doesn't look like anything really changed there. But that's because it's using the same settings as the last time that I did camphor. And now I, I want to change these settings a little bit. So I'm going to change the camphor amount up. And notice as I move the camphor amount, look what happens. See what's happening to all those edges? See how they, they all curved and rounded right there? Let me take a look at my reference image. Man, I'm almost pretty happy with what I see happening right there. It's got that look. Come back here and maybe adjust the camphor amount a little bit and see how I like this. What is this thing? The camphor edge tension? What does that do? What is it? It's not doing anything. All right. Open camphor. I think I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit the green check mark. And there we go. Now I'm committed. So that created a bunch of geometry, which then, you know, I, yeah, it's looking pretty good here. Now, there's some stuff going on over here in this area right here that um, I, I want to clean up some. Uh, I, I'd like um, a little bit less noise over here. In fact, there's a, a lot of noise over here. So um, I'm going to switch to vertices and I'm going to weld some of these vertices together so that they, um, it's not, it's not, it's not creating so much detail. So I'll click on target weld. And I think first off, I'll marry those two vertices and then I'll marry these two vertices. And then I'll marry these two vertices. And then this vertex, oops, I'm going to grab the move tool and just grab that vertex right there. And I want to be careful about this. I only want to move it in X and Z. That's it. And um, let me come around to the front and tilt this down a little bit. And... That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Okay, good. So notice how I cleaned up those vertices there at that point. I restored some of the, the shape to this that it had before. Um, clean those vertices up. Now, right in here, I don't quite need all of this detail either on this part. Um, I've got a bunch of vertices and a bunch of unnecessary polygons in here. So 
I'm going to turn the target weld back on and I'll weld these vertices. I, I want the ones over here on that edge to just stay put. That vertus right there. Let me just select it. It's really not connected to anything. I'll just select that one vertex and hit remove, and it'll take it out of there for me. So it removed it. So there. I've cleaned this up significantly. Um, I might want to just grab this vertus and move it, move it down to just straighten that out. So clean those vertices up right there. Now, I want to I wanna quickly apply some materials to this just so I could begin to get a feel for how is it looking. Um, but even before I do that, let me see about rounding this edge right here. I want to round this. I want to round this edge. Let me get on edges, get off the move tool, double click. Let's see, what did I get when I double clicked? Oh my gosh, it went all the way around, just like I wanted it to. It went all the way around. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to grab that edge. Grab that edge. All right. I did this right. Probably have six edges selected. Good. These two edges and down the side. Those two edges and down the side. Turn on the camphor tool and adjust the camphor amount. Looking to check the roundness of the edge to see if the roundness of the edge on the outer edge might be better for me to look at this just from the back. Because from the back, I can really get a feel for how it's looking. And maybe even switching to the, not bottom, front. Yeah, in the front view, I get a really nice... Five. 
Yeah, I think I'm happy with it. I'm going to hit the commit button, switch back to perspective viewport. Back in my front view. Okay. Yeah. Edges all around are rounded nicely. I do notice that the back kind of curves in a little bit. The back does kind of curve in a little bit. I could quickly begin to create that curve by selecting these polygons and just scaling them in a little bit in X and Y. Scaling them in a little bit in X and Y. Maybe even scale them in a little bit more. Good. Yeah, because it does slope away a little bit. Right. So now I think I will I will go ahead and apply those materials that I was talking about a little while ago. Um, this is going to make me want to talk to you about something called selection sets. Selection sets are a way that I can group together a bunch of polygons. It's like I want to be able to get my hands on these easily. And so I'm going to select, and this I have to be down to some fine detail here. Can't even seem a little tedious. Just occurred to me, I might have some, some vertices I need to fix up down here. Just came across this little train wreck of vertices at the bottom. Later, that may create some problems for me. Um, let me switch to vertex real quick and zoom in on this mess and see if I can clean this up. Um, I'll target weld that vertex to that vertex. tool. Move this one over and move it up a little bit. Let's see, copy that one's Y value. Find that vertex up. There we go. A lot cleaner there at that point in the bottom. Let me look over here. Yep, that looks good too. All right. Back on polygons. Now, it remembers my selection, thankfully. It remembered my selection up to that point where I changed the geometry. And now I will go ahead and continue to select these polygons. All right. And... Um, I also know that because the whole body of this thing, the whole body is that fire truck engine red. So I also need to make sure I select the whole body. So I've got the whole body. 
And for right now, I'll, later later I might paint the back a little differently. But uh, just for right now, I'll go ahead and paint the, the back of the TV with that same bright red. So um, I'll create this. This selection set's going to be called Red. So and what? How did I do that? Uh, up here at the top. If you mouse over right up here at the top, it says create selection set. If you have a bunch of stuff selected and it took you, ooh, look at that. I had ignore back facing off and I almost played myself like a violin. Let me turn that back off. Hold my control key down. Man, I want to get all that stuff. Did I miss anything on the bottom? Nope. Yeah, I want to paint that whole thing red. I don't want any of the polygons inside the front face, but... I definitely want all those. So here I'll create the selection set and I'll just call it red. And now if I deselect that or I select something else, I can go to this drop down menu and immediately select all those polygons again. This is a very useful technique. You know, it takes time to select them the first time, but then you don't have to waste that time again. You know, you just, you just use the selection set. Now, the next thing I want to get, what's going to be the next easiest thing for me to get? Um, that would probably be the part of the, the front that's going to be black, the part of the front that's going to be black. So I'm just looking at, you know, just darn near everything but the screen then. So darn near everything but the screen. Okay, good. Let me get myself oriented back to front. Wheel out a little bit back to front. Here's a cool thing. Edit. Please tell me they still have it. They do. Select invert. Select invert. This is a great thing. You know, I, I got I got all that stuff selected, don't I? I want to select everything else, and I don't want to have to do all the work to select everything else. And so, if I go select invert, it gets me everything else, doesn't it? But I don't want the screen. I don't want the screen. And I've turned off, I've turned off, ignore back facing. I, I, so what I'll do is now that I have all those selected, I'll press my alt key, hold down my alt key, and I'm going to try to sweep out as much of the, of the screen as I can. And I think I got, yeah, pretty much got rid of the screen, but there's some stuff I, I took out too much. So I'm going to turn ignore back facing back on and I need to pick up those polygons that I accidentally deselected. And I believe then I should have all the faces that I want to paint black. Those are all the faces I want to paint black. So I'll create a selection set and I'll call this one black. I'm going to hold down my control key and let's see, red, hold down my control key, black. Nope. It only lets me get one selection set or the other. So this is going to be work, but it's okay. It's work I can do. I want to try to select just the computer screen, but not get stuff I don't want to get. So let's see here. Looks to me like I missed this stuff right here, but I got that stuff I don't want. I missed this. Jocelyn, you're going to spend the whole block on your cell phone or are you going to work on this project? You know, you're getting five hours of class time and that cell phone's been like anchored in front of you since 9, 9 a.m. Yeah, well, you, you know, you're not going to be able to follow these steps, but but you should be trying to do something, you know, just staring at your cell phone. It's, <laughs> you're, you're throwing the time away. You have to work on this. So now I've got the screen here. I've got the screen. So I'll call this one screen. Got me the screen there and hit enter. And now I can cycle through these different parts. The red, which is all the whole outside the black part, which is 
the black part of the plastic, and then the actual screen. So now I can I can paint these things. I'm going to press M for the material editor to bring the material editor up. Remember, first time you press it, it moves real slow. And so I'm going to need three materials. The first one I'll drag in. It'll just be a regular physical material that I'm going to name screen. And the color I'll set this physical material to will be like a, a really light blue. And the thing that's really important to me is I want this screen to be transparent. I want to be able to see through this screen. So if you'll notice right underneath base color, there's a setting for just the thing I want, transparency. And I'm going to set the transparency for this to 0 0.9. One means glass. Can't even see it. It's so transparent you can't even see it. 0.9 means a little bit of that light blue is going to be kind of visible, and it's going to give the impression of actually being able to see through a curved piece of glass. And then with that set up there, my transparency set up and a light blue color set up, I'm going to grab the little, the little noodle that comes out of there, grab that little noodle and come over here, and I'm going to apply that to the screen. And then check it out in the, ren the render window. And you might be thinking that nothing's changed right there. You might be thinking nothing's changed right there. You know, you might. Let me turn off polygons for just a moment. Get my move tool. Hmm, bad booth. I never positioned my model at 000. Let me put that at 000. Later on, I might want to use symmetry and... Uh, I better have that at 000. Okay. Now that that's at 000, I'm going to hide my selection. Where did it go? <laughs> it disappeared. It's okay. I'm going to make a little teapot. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. There we go. Got my teapot. I also want to put that at 000. That way, it's going to be inside my TV. And I want to move it up a little bit. So, you know, I might be able to see it. Right click unhide all and you know you can still see my teapot can't you but it's inside there isn't it let's render this now and well what do you know you can see through that screen what we're seeing through is into the inside of of the tv that material is transparent i can see inside of it now let's see here a little bit better positioning maybe not quite so big Try another render here, and there you go. Now, I'm also seeing inside of the actual model, okay? That's why some of the color discoloration, discolorations in the corner. I'm seeing the back sides of these polygons that, you know, granted the outside's got clay on it, but the inside, it just it doesn't have any material applied to it at all. 3ds Max is not going to waste graphics power painting the inside of an object you're not going to see. Later on, like when I bring this into Unity, instead of a teapot, I put a plane, a plane. I'm not talking about something with wings that flies. I mean a flat square surface. I put a flat square surface in there that lines right up with the bottom of the screen, the very part where the screen curves into the TV. And that flat plane, that's what I put my video on and play it on. Kind of cool. All right. So that took care of the screen. Now let's take care of the other things I want to take care of. I'll collapse that. I'm going to bring in a shellac. Shellacs are kind of like, it's the standard materials, the scanline renders materials that can be viewed as um, uh, shiny. And this one already comes with a really nice red. So might as well just go with the defaults on that. And let me select my object. Got my object selected. Good. And make sure I'm on polygons. I'm on polygons. Good. Now I can get to my selection sets. Red. I've selected red. I'm going to grab the little noodle out of there, right out of shellac, and apply that. Let me see how this thing's looking. 
Oh my gosh, it's beginning to look a lot like that TV, isn't it? Next, I'm going to select black. I see a red door and I want to paint it black. All right, so I've got the black part of my object selected. Open up the material editor again. I'm going to collapse that material and collapse all of these. Hit the little vertical, line them up, and it lines up all my materials vertically for me. And I'll just bring in one more physical material. Actually, you know what? That, even the black material in this, isn't the black material kind of got a shiny sheen to it, kind of? Kind of a glossy texture. So maybe I want to use shellac. Mm. Yeah, I can always change it later, can't I? So bring in another shellac. Only this time, when I bring in this other shellac, um, I, I don't want its, its base color. I don't want it to be red now. I want it to be black. There we go. And then I'll grab the little noodle, and come out here, and drop that material on. And when I hit the, oh, that's the render settings. Hmm. Hey, want to know how to make an even bigger, finer, higher resolution, better detail map? Open up the render setup and change your um, output size. Change that from custom. 640 by 480 because that's what the standard render is it's a custom render and it's 640 by 480 and because i just did what i did I, I i messed it up here but that's okay you can see it right there that's a 640 by 480 render of the tv but if i change that output size to hdtv video the very last choice now it's 1,920 pixels by 1,080 pixels. Muy grande. If I hit the render button now, it'll take a little longer to render and I'll get a higher resolution render and really get to see how my materials are looking. But this is beginning to look a lot like a television, isn't it? That's even already got like some kind of cooking show on it, you know? We're teaching you how to make tea. All right. That's going to wrap it up for today. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video, and thank you for paying attention.